Jeff, we know when Moby Dick came out, people were afraid of the killer whale, even though they probably would never see one in person. But what is it about sharks that we fear so much? It's probably mostly from my generation that grew up watching Jaws. And we're petrified of sharks. But I think like if you talk to kids, I don't think they're scared of sharks like we are. They've grown up with sharks and shark week. Sharks are just cool. If you go to any aquarium, all the kids are usually gathered around the shark tank. Sharks have different appeals for everybody. Some of it's based in fear, and I think some of it is really based in fascination. Depending on what generation, right? Like as an adult, you put your toe in the baby pool, and you're like, where's the shark? But for the kids, you're going, baby shark, do 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 Baby shark, do 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 baby shark. Uh, you have done so much when it comes to filmmaking techniques, night vision, thermal imaging, robotic seals, submarines, all the things that can take you beneath the ocean. Uh, what was it like the very first time you came face to face with a shark? I think I heard that famous Jaws music playing in my head. You know, what's interesting. After you've done your first shark dive, it's like a potato chip. You got to have another one and another one, and people get addicted to shark diving. Thankfully, there's ecotourism uh, outlets all over the world now that take people in to see sharks. I think in almost every case, when someone gets in the water with a shark and goes in the cage and sees them up close for themselves, all that fear goes away, or at least a lot of that fear goes away, and they just love the sharks, and that's what happened to me. You know, after I experienced a few sharks and saw my sh first shark breaching out of the water, like the guy behind me here, um, I just became hooked. Or what was the, the, the thing that you learned that you went really about sharks? The fact that they do these incredibly wide ranging migrations. We have great whites off the California coast that in three months from now will be in Hawaii. And then three months after that, they'll be in Mexico. And what's interesting about those migrations is they often go to the very same place at the very same time. You can almost set your watch by it. Uh, oh, it's six o'clock, here comes Deep Blue. I mean, it's amazing these sharks have developed this internal GPS and an internal clock that allows them to circumnavigate the globe. Also, that sharks have different personalities, aggressive, shy, curious. Uh, they run the gamut, just like people. Oh, he wants that camera. Oh, that is incredible. He wanted that camera. He's gonna come back again. And you're gonna get a different shot and a different reaction from every shark. That is amazing. That shark is bigger than the boat. You're absolutely right. We were dragging on the coast once, and we can't, a, a shark got caught in our net. And everybody screamed at first, and they were like, "But it's not doing anything. It's not. It's not. It's not like a land shark. It's not attacking us." Andy Graham. <laughs> Three new shows this year, uh, Air Jaws, Ultimate Breach Off. Okay, here we go. Come on, shark, rise, beast. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> it flew like 10 feet out the water. And that's really a competition sort of show between three researchers in South Africa who are trying to capture the best and the most breaches. And I'll give you a little giveaway here. So the shot behind me is the best breach that they captured. They were able to get some unbelievable flying shark shots all in an effort to learn more about the local population and do research on how these sharks hunt and uh, just an incredible show. We also do another show that looks back on the 20 year history of Air Jaws, some incredible moments that we've been blessed uh, to have with these animals uh, all around the world. It's an incredible variety of shows that um, I think there's something for everyone. Jaws Awakens, that sounds really cool. That was our search for uh, in New Zealand uh, for a shark named Fred. Just keep the chum going, guys. There's a really big shark here. It could be Fred. About seven years ago, I first encountered Fred, and he actually tried to sink one of our shark cages. He bit the float that was holding it up, and the diver inside almost went plummeting to the bottom. Mistook the float for probably a fish or something like that. But it was an incredible scene. Fred is an 18-foot male great white, so we definitely had a particular interest in him. And I went back again a couple of years later, and sure enough, Fred showed up. So for this year, we wanted to go back and see if we could find him again. And we, we just had an incredible encounter with Fred and uh, really a lot of fun to make that film. Do you think he knows his name is Fred? 
<laughs> Very good question. I think as long as you're holding a tuna, he's going to come by any day. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. And as you mentioned, Air Jaws 2020 revisits the most iconic uh, flying shark moments. There's something that's kind of interesting happening right now because so many people are in a lockdown around the world because of COVID-19. You say it seems like the sharks are being able to reclaim the ocean, uh, their home, their natural home. Well, yeah, I mean, Shark Week was a huge challenge this year, uh, dealing with the lockdowns. And I had to direct the show from South Africa remotely. I'm here in California, it's about a 10 hour time difference. So I would call my crew in South Africa, hey, how's it going? And luckily we had WhatsApp so I could see what was happening when they were towing decoys and, and, and whatnot. But what they discovered was even after three months of no one being at sea around an area where we filmed the sharks, an area called Seal Rock, uh, the sharks were there and there was plenty of them. We threw a bait in the water. We had 20 great whites around the boat within a matter of uh, like an hour. So, you know, personally, I don't think the sharks are really reacting too much to humans. They're programmed to do what they're going to do. That's, you know, 400 million years of evolution. A shark is going to show up when a shark is supposed to show up, whether a human's there or not. So the only thing that sharks have to worry about with humans is, of course, you know, overfishing. Which is, a, which is a huge problem for these animals. And, um, but otherwise, they don't really care about us. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, thank you so much because it, it is wildly entertaining, but at the same time, I think what it does is teaches us to appreciate life. And you're right, uh, we may fear them, but a lot of that fear is unfounded. And so they just wanna go ahead and do what they've been doing for millions of years. Okay, I'm gonna end with, and you have to do it with me. You have to do it with me. <laughs> Baby shark, do, do, come on, baby shark, do, do, do it with me. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> Say that last. It's the end. 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 It's the end.